Okay, let's talk about our final project, guys. Um, so you're all working on the winery. Most of you are, except for a handful. Um, if you're not taking a design class, you may use any project of yours from the past. Um, but if you are taking the design class uh, now and you're working on the winery, please use that project. Um, so this is meant to simulate what it's going to be like when you're developing your representation for your model in, in you know, sort of a university setting, not so much um, ours. Because in a university setting, you're going to be expected to be putting out really high quality renderings even when your model's not done. So you're actually at a really great place right now to start thinking about this and how you're going to strategize completing a rendering at the same time that you're still making changes to your model. So it's going to require making smart decisions about when and where you're going to take your um, renderings from and your point of view. Um, and, uh, and it may even you know, take a little bit of adaptation if anything major changes later on. So um, basically, uh, the key part, I think, of, of what I wrote here is the output size. OK, you're doing one render. We are doing one final render. So think about everything we did for the last set when we did three separate renders, right? You're only doing one. The difference is you're going to have a set of requirements that you're going to have to do after the render is completed, OK? So I'm going to walk you through that, and we'll get to the schedule part at the bottom in a second. Um, but it's, it's not going to be overwhelming, OK? The Photoshop stuff is supposed to go really quick. Basically, dropping in some people, dropping in some objects, dropping in some landscape and stuff and, you know, foliage, whatever. Um, and then doing a few little visual tricks in order to get the render to really feel like, um, like a, a, a powerful sort of scene. So, um, so anyway, what we've got is uh, an output size of 11 by 17. So this is the only time you're going to be rendering a full bleed 11 by 17 sheet for this class, okay? Um, so that's a pretty, you know, widescreen format. It's going to be a good format, I think, for this, for this particular um, assignment. Um, so uh, the example spaces. Let's talk about strategy for how you want to render these spaces. Um, if you're, if you were to model this room that we're in, how long do you think it would take you? Just ballpark it, like to model everything in this room. Desk and everything. In Rhino, yeah. Are you kidding? Way more than that. I'm talking like lights, ceilings, the little models that are up on the shelf, this mouse, this little thing that's sitting on the front of the desk here, the stapler, right? All the little mice out there, all your little notepads. Yeah, the racks. That little TV stand that doesn't have a TV on it. That's going to take a lot longer than 10 hours, right? Right. Yeah, yeah like a month. Um, so if I were to ask you to stand outside of this building and model the building, how long do you think it would take? Huh? Yeah, maybe, yeah, comparatively maybe a couple of days, right? Um, so the idea is... Um, one particular type of space takes a lot longer to model up to a renderable quality than another. So um, I'm, not, I, I'm not necessarily restricting you from doing a completely exterior render, but I do want to see some interior components. So what I think is advisable is to use a semi-exterior space. Okay, because if you're doing a semi-exterior space, get this, right? We're talking strategy now. Your design models are not done yet. So your exterior is going to change a lot between now and your final project, right? You would expect it would. Um, so, so the strategy of taking a semi-exterior space means you can set your camera sort of inside the building-ish, and you can look sort of kind of outside the building, um, and then kind of detail a small, like a patio or balcony, an entryway, and then look out over some landscape and, and some, con, uh, I guess, contextual um, backgrounding. Um, and, and it makes your render easier because if the exterior cladding changes, the materials change, you don't have to necessarily go back and re-render all of that um, and, and remodel all of that too for the sake of your render. Does that make sense? And you'll see what I mean in a second. But 
Um, actually, let's just jump down there. So basically, um, what I'm referring to is something like this. So this is kind of what I put up as like a sample. Um, the reason I really like this render as a benchmark for you guys is that it's not um, overly filtered, so it doesn't have like a bunch of crazy Photoshopping going on, but it is kind of a beautifully well-balanced uh, representation and composition. Um, it's not overly detailed. The architecture is not overly detailed, uh, therefore it requires a little bit less um, you know, detailing in the componentry of the building. Um, and the materials are not super incredibly accurate. But for some reason, with this, with the color palette and the mutedness of how it was composed, um, it doesn't really bother the eye. So we're going to go through all that kind of stuff um, in detail in a, a little bit. But I just wanted to throw this out at, at you to, to kind of consider, as we're talking through this project, what that means for your building. So you have most of your design ideas laid out, and I'm sure you're already thinking about what types of spaces this might be compatible with. So anyway, the idea is keep it simple, pick an area where you don't have to model too much so that when it changes, you can quickly adjust it should you need to, okay? Um, any questions about that so far? Okay. Um, all right, uh, the other thing is the schedule. So we only have two weeks of class left, and then we have our final. Uh, our final is gonna be Tuesday, the, the week of finals, I think that's uh, the 11th, 11th, yeah. Um, so, yeah. This is your assignment for final? Yeah, yeah. And a final exam, 120 questions. You have two hours to do it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so anyway, the schedule is, uh, so we really only have like tonight, and then we have like three other class periods where I'm gonna be teaching you some things, um, and then the final. So tonight, what I need from you is to pick your space and start developing it. So I'm going to check in with each of you um, as you're developing it. So I'll give you a little bit of work time to kind of work through that, select some, you know, pick some ideas and maybe start modeling a few, picking some camera angles. And then uh, for the back half of class, I'm going to meet with you and, and talk through it. Because um, we got to move pretty fast, okay? And then Thursday, November 29th, um, that's where we're already going to start going in and photoshopping people. We're going to photoshop uh, people, objects, and some landscape into your scene. So what does that mean? You need to have a draft render ready by Thursday. Okay. So it doesn't have to have much in it. Like this, uh, this example here, right? No table, no people in the background, just kind of like walls and openings and overhangs, and then this can just be blank. Like all the stuff outside of it can just be blank, right? That's what I'm getting at. Just keep it simple. Maybe if you want to play around with some materiality, sure, go ahead and do that, but you don't really have that much time for that between now and Thursday, okay? So we're going to be doing the Photoshopping of these elements um, beginning on Thursday. So uh, after that, we're going to look at visual style and um, visual methods. So this means like, well, if we're going to be Photoshopping people in, are they going to remain just legitimate cutouts of, of people and it looks like people? Are they going to be silhouettes? If they're going to be silhouettes, are they going to be black or white silhouettes or grayscale? Are they going to be glowing? Are they going to cast shadows? Are they going to be like a decoupage, sort of like a, you know the old school South Park days when they used to take the little construction paper things and put them on so you could see a little bit of shadow with some relief and bevel and emboss and that kind of stuff? So we're going to talk about all of that from a Photoshop perspective on what we've already started to Photoshop into our uh, render. Okay? Um, and then... Uh, finally, on December 6th, we're going to talk about finishing and filtering. So finishing and filtering is really just kind of the, the stuff that gives it the extra pizzazz in a render. Um, let, me, uh, let me pull up, just show you some uh, examples. So there are a bunch of different types of examples when you search for architectural rendering. Some of them are going to have a lot less filtering and finishing, and some of them are going to have a lot more. So an example of a building that has a lot less finishing and filtering is this one. right? You look at it, it kind of looks like your Maxwell renders. right? It's got a little bit of the vignetting around the outside, so it dims at the corners. But ultimately, the building looks like the building looks like the building. 
Um, there's not a lot of magic there. So um, one that is super heavily filtered is this one. Um, so we're gonna get somewhere in between. We're gonna start to look at how we can use some filters to breathe a lot more life into it. Um, it's not gonna have that whole sort of dystopic, um, you know, I don't know what you call it, zing to it. Um, but you're gonna get your first taste on how to actually get a building to, to you know, have some magic built into it. Something like this even. You know, adding like a sepia filter um, and then dimming it out and multiplying it, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, we're gonna deal with like lens flares as well. So uh, anyway, I think you'll get a lot out of that and it doesn't take a lot to do it. I think you'll actually be shocked when you start seeing that it, it really can take you just 10 minutes to turn a, a flat render into something that's very, very lively. Okay, um, so that is our schedule. And then after the sixth, you'll have five days to prepare for your final. And put it all into action, okay? What questions do you have? Okay. That's cool. Yeah. No, 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 just one space, one render. Yep. 